Hi everybody, Aluna Michaels, Esoteric and Quantum Astrologer, here talking about events of January 2006, 17, 17. Um, just one quick Libra issue. I struggled with my hair and said, you know what, the girls are crazy today, it looks messy, but I have got to do this video. So all you Libras and perhaps Leos out there will understand what I'm talking about with the hair, but onward and upward, okay? Sorry, don't want any comments on the YouTube about what my hair looks like this month. Um, all right, so many exciting things to talk about with January. First of all, a lot of people like to know when Mercury goes direct, and it will be going direct on January 7th, yay. Um, interestingly, you know, this is, um, you got to know a little bit about the year, the um cycle of Mercury. It went retrograde in December, um, and let me tell you the date, <clears throat> it was December 19th, and it went retrograde at 15, 16, what's 15? 15 degrees of Capricorn. Went backwards to um, 28 degrees of Sagittarius on January 7th, it's going to do that, then it goes forward, right? It will catch up with itself and hit 15 degrees of Capricorn again. Um, this uh, January 27, a lot of people like to know about that. When does it catch up with itself? But what's interesting is the day that goes direct, the Sun and Pluto are both conjuncting right next to each other at um, like 17 degrees of Capricorn. So if you get what I'm getting at here, the Sun and Pluto and Capricorn, the day Mercury goes direct, at basically the same degree it went retrograde at. So there's a lot of potency in there. Um, just in general, Sun conjunct Pluto is very determined and passionate and you know forceful in the sense of visionary. So if we're talking about the beginning of the year, and I think resolutions is a weak sort of word for just, let's say, you know, planning um, and planting seeds in your mind for the whole year, you know, that a sun conjunct Pluto, sorry, my kitty's in the background meowing, he likes to go outside this time of day. So um, that sun conjunct Pluto is powerful and it's in Capricorn, obviously, with the sun in Capricorn in January. So it's like, I want this to come forward for me this year. And Mercury going direct um, having been gone retrograde at that point, it's part of the theme of that retrograde. It's like, yeah, let's get like, what's in the way of getting those things happening? What are the, the ways I think? Um, people who might, you know, um, say, nah, you can't let that happen or, you know, or you won't make that happen or, oh, that's a good idea. But, you know, so because Mercury can be people around you, but mostly Mercury's often in our own minds and our own habitual mindset and thoughts. So when the Sun and Pluto and Mercury are sort of working like that, it's like what can be uprooted to become more powerful, become more determined? What are the thoughts that do support the new you that you want to not just do for a few weeks in January, but improve yourself throughout the whole year and, and onward, right? So the other thing that's happening right at the beginning of January is the planet Mars in, will be in Pisces right next to Neptune. Um... Mars itself is about, you know, go for it, you know, and Neptune is, hmm, I'm imagining it. So again, that can be a vision of the future. A bad way Mer Mars and Neptune can be is like nothing happens, you know, it's like I'm gonna and then yeah, Neptune. So we want to use that in the best way, which is how am I going to be in the future? What will this be like? Another thing of the combination of all these um planets I'm talking about, I'm going to get to some other ones too, but that first week of January is so kind of packed full, is imagining, you know, like here's a simple example, like you want to not eat, you know, sugar or something, um, sweets, and imagining not just, you know, I'm going to not eat sweets, but what happens when someone says, hey, here's some chocolate cake or butterscotch pudding or whatever, like visualizing yourself being able to say no to that, and who are you? saying no to that, how do you feel strong, what's in place of that with the sweets and all. Um, okay, sorry. Um, so part of the visualization can be how are you going to overcome your obstacles, you know, because Mars in Pisces can show that, how you're going to be your own hero or heroine and triumph over these obstacles that are going to inevitably come up. And I think those combination of planets can speak to that. The other thing that will happen <clears throat> is um, Saturn's a little complicated to talk about, but um, Saturn and Uranus 
are going to trine each other. That's a nice flow of energy. Fire sign, uh, Saturn's in Sagittarius, Uranus is in Aries. These are outer planets we're going to talk about, but it's nice when they all kind of work together. Now, um, I'm actually doing this video on the 28th. It's 28 today? Yeah, 28th of December. And Uranus is actually moving direct. Uranus, um, well, all the outer, outer planets only go retrograde and direct once a year. <clears throat> Mercury does it as an inner planet, does it a few times, three times a year usually. So um, Uranus just going forward at the end of December. And Uranus is that aha, you know, that can be just an awakening of ideas. And it's an Aries again. Yeah, I'm going to make those changes. Or I've got, you know, these concepts I'm going to visualize the new me, whatever. And then Saturn, working with that, Saturn's very steady. Because Uranus can just be kind of pie in the sky sometimes, and so can Jupiter, which we'll also talk about. But Saturn's like, and here's how it's going to work. Here's that structure underneath that idea, okay? So Uranus um, is actually been doing this a little bit throughout December, and then going into January, taking Uranus and Saturn, working together. Then there's a planet Jupiter that's in Libra, so it's making what's called a sextile to both the Saturn and the Uranus. And Jupiter keeps you upbeat, keeps a uh, creative mind open, um, draws helpful people. And again, for anybody who's maybe a naysayer about what you want to do, you've got the helpful people you can draw in or your own negativity. Oh, now I've got the helpful thought and I'm going to choose to listen to that and support myself with that, with the Jupiter. And so all of these sort of planning, um, you know, it's a little planning group the Uranus, the Saturn, and the Jupiter working together at the beginning of um, January. So, you know, those guys are doing what they're doing. We've got Mercury, Saturn, excuse me, Mercury, Sun, and Pluto doing a thing, and Mars and Neptune over there. So you get kind of all corners kind of, you know, visualizing, uh, doing the planning. And again, that Pluto part kind of, you know, what happens if it doesn't work or I get challenged? How am I going to overcome it? And walk yourself through that in your mind. And because, you know, you know that if you're imagining it, your brain can record it, as it, record it as if it actually happened. So if in your mind you're seeing yourself, you know, looking at the chocolate cake and saying no or whatever, then you've got this victory in your mind and you almost feel like you already dealt with it. And then when you come upon it in real life, you've already practiced saying no and are stronger. So the reinforcing of what you want to do, um, drawing in people already that are supportive of, you know, maybe other people. The Mercury there, I don't want to say it's all negative people, um, you know, putting you down or something, but people also are as determined to make the changes. You know, having a band of people um, that are trying to accomplish the same goal, supporting each other each week, whatever, um, you know, kind of connecting and making the changes together. That can be a good thing instead of just, you know, on your own. The other thing is that <clears throat> for basically the whole month, Venus is going to be in Pisces, which is like, aw. Um, Venus in Pisces is very sweet and kind. And I think that that's a nice thing to have over this is that your goals this month are self-loving and you're compassionate towards yourself toward making the change as you are saying, no, I'm not going to do the thing. That it's like, wow, it's really hard to not do the thing. And yeah, you didn't do the thing, you know? So you're kind and supportive for yourself through the process. If you do stumble, that Venus and Pisces can help you be kind to yourself. Again, also, if you've got a buddy, that can be Venus, that comrade in arms who's saying, yeah, it was hard and I had a good day and you had a bad day, but we're good doing it together, you know? Um, so that sense of union and support and kindness is Venus and Pisces. Um, you know, and also if you're looking at relationship issues, this can be a great time to be reconnecting with that um, higher standards of how you want to behave in relationships, the kind of relationships you want to draw towards you, how you want to improve being together if you're already in a relationship. That's also good. Um, and let me see. I usually have a little timer here. and sorry I didn't have it. I don't know if I'm going. Let me just see how long I've been doing this far. Ah, okay. Pretty much almost done. Um, let's see what else I can tell you. Um, <clears throat> um, um, um. I'm going to cancer. Okay. I think that's about it. Um, you know, one, one last thing maybe to say is that um, because of the Mars and Neptune and Pisces together at the beginning of the month, try not to make a goal so big. It's like... Um, Making sure you are making, 
making these goals that are manageable. And even if they're in portions, you know, because sometimes there can be an all or nothing with that Pisces stuff, and then you beat yourself up with a week later with that Cap hard Capricorn Pluto stuff, or, you know, it's like, again, bringing in that compassion of the Venus and Pisces saying, you know, let's do something I know I'm willing to do, not just a random thing or what I, my highest ideal of what I want to do, but what am I really willing to do? You know, if it's the sugar, it's like, maybe it's, I'm um, only going to, you know, not eat ice cream if that's your biggest thing because donuts aren't a big deal or something like that and then you know go one month and then add something to it or something or just re re run it through with a friend about if you're just um, making an impossible goal so you want to have goals that you, you want to have a win-win situation you want to feel good about yourself and know you're going to accomplish it make it a stretch but not something that you're sort of bound to fail and set yourself up for failure so letting somebody um, kind of connect with you about that, someone you trust, and being honest with yourself about what, what you're really willing to grow about. Because if you have that solid growth that the Uranus, Saturn, and Jupiter are trying to support, like having that solid win, even if it's a small win, but it's a solid step, then you can take some more steps as opposed to failing right out, you know what I mean? So um, there's enough energy throughout the, the month and, you know, of course, throughout the year we'll look at if one step like you want to win you want a solid win and say I did that even if it was small I did it and I'm not going back down I know I can be here and this is the new bottom line and then I can lift it you know instead of way up here and I didn't do any of it so be kind to yourself um, enjoy the new year and um, it's just nice all these a lot of people have said oh gosh 2016 was so hard and you know a lot of these famous people have just died over the past week here um, just found out Carrie Fisher and George Michael and all that and it's like um, so the guy Ricky Harris was his name and it's like oh 2016 there was so many people and going and it was challenging and you know but it's really nice that we're having this little wrap up at the very end of December going into January of of um, feeling still supported and there's a lot of spiritual um, renewal and um, kind of like when Jupiter and Saturn and Uranus work together there's like a, ah, this is why this is going on um, even if it's like we're all in it together um, you know because sometimes when those big people leave the planet um, iconic people we're all drawn into the memories with that person remember how we're all one and sharing with our love for that person or something so even that Jupiter Saturn can reinforce that we're all here together we can all be kind to each other and um, connect with each other while we're here or something like that so even out of the sadness of that uh, or even the toughness of 2016 some people said it so hard there's that um, you know again we're in it together we're working together and that's why you want to work with the best parts of yourself to create that good New Year's resolution that you know you're going to be successful at and um, continue to be take small successful steady steps uh, as you go along okay so if you need me um, alunamichaels.com um, my best way to get me a cell phone, you can text to 248-583-1663. You know, my email is aluna at alunamichaels.com. I've got my ebook on the website. You can let me know about too if you want that. Or of course, reading is always available for you guys when you need me with that. And hang in there. Enjoy yourself. Have a happy new year. And I look forward to um, thinking of you being successful in the steps you're taking for the new year. Okay. Bye for now.